Today we play the most prestigious, glorified, hyped up event in all of poker. Jesus Christ. So many people just in this room, a uh, lot of people late regging. I am one of them. So, I made it to day two of this event too, by the way, but because uh, I late regged, I'm buying in today. Mainly because I busted last year for my first time. I felt just not ready for it, unprepared. But I made it to day two because I'm registering in day two with 75 big blinds. There are thousands of people in, in this room, actually. It's, it, I actually had no idea what to expect. It's packed, it's incredible, and we're gonna run it up. It's a $10,000 buy-in, the most prestigious event in all of poker, and I'm excited to get started. And it's, it's, quite, it's quite the shit show here, actually. I didn't know what to expect coming in, but here we are. Super hyped for this, can't wait, and wow, this is a really, really, really long line. Holy shit, uh, there's hundreds of people in the late reg line. All these people that I'm walking around, I, I'm, I'm in line, so uh, wow. It's gonna be a while to actually enter, it seems like, but here we are, let's hop into this event. Jesus Christ. Look at, this is, this is the line of people I have to wait <laughs> to actually get into the tournament. Okay, let's just play. So close to regging. This is the full level already. Standing for two full hours. The main event experience. This is what we paid ten thousand dollars for. This is the whole freaking level. That's the late reg line. It's very very close. I guess that's what happens when you have like four or five, six hundred people late reg uh, here at the very last minute. It's just like all poker players, I'm the same. We all, we're all just procrastinators or something. I don't know. Wait till the very last minute to do something. That was a mistake on my part, but a pretty unfortunate experience so far. Two hours into waiting. Haven't played a hand yet. We're going to hop in with 60 big blinds when we get a seat. And that's kind of comfortable, actually. So I'm, I'm not going to complain. I didn't sign up to play 300 bigs for day one. We're going to play with 60 bigs. That's it. Still waiting. It's, it's been a long morning for sure. Finally, getting a seat into the WSOP 2022 main event. We sit down in level seven of this day two. Blinds are 500, 1K, 1K, and with 60,000 starting, I immediately sit in the big blind, which is not the most ideal situation, but I do pick up queen 10 off suit. There's an early position raise of 2,500. Small blind makes the call, and yeah, I'm in here too. I make the call, and we're going to a flop of ace, nine, deuce, rainbow. Action checks to the early position player, and he bets some amount. That is insignificant because the small blind and myself just fold. Just wanted to get it in. Finally, break down the first hand I've played here in the main event. I chipped down a tad least, but at least I'm getting my feet wet in the most prolific tournament of the year. All right, I'm ready to battle after that hand. I pick up five, six of diamonds in the low jack. Action folds to me, and this is certainly one to raise, so I open things up to 2200. Folds around to the small blind player, who three bets to 6200. Big blind folds, and I look at my opponent, and it's very obvious that he's taking a shot here in this tournament, and he's not going to be messing around too much when he's three betting. So I think I just have the perfect hand to potentially crack his big hand that I might be holding, and I get to play in position facing a good price of a small three bet, so let's see a flop. I stick in a call, let's battle, and the flop is king nine four all diamonds. This is the flop I'm looking for. He bets out 5,000 into the field, and this is just a dream. I am fist bumping so hard in my head, and given the size of the pot, I just expect any hand like aces, kings, or even ace king to get some value against if they have a diamond. So let's do that. I bump up a raise to 18,000, and he immediately doesn't look happy. Not much of a poker face here against my opponent, but he ends up calling. So Expecting to have aces or queens with a diamond, maybe kings, but I don't think they'd be super unhappy with a raise on the flop here. But we're going to a turn, just hoping to fade a diamond. It is the ten of diamonds. God, one time I'm trying to run really good in this tournament here. He checks it over to me and seeing the fourth diamond on the board. The strength of my hand has been heavily dominated, so... Here we are. I check back, and let's just see a river, which is the queen of diamonds. Jesus, how how is there so many diamonds on the board? Well, at least he doesn't have pocket queens with a diamond, so I guess I beat a set of queens? Luckily, he checks, so easy decision to just check this one back with my six high flush, and he shows pocket aces with a diamond. Six start to the best event in the entire world. I found the perfect flop, but very unlucky, unfortunate turn. And my chip stack that started at 60,000 is now down to 30,000. 
Not how you want to start the main event, but here trying to claw back. Following hand, picking up king queen offsuit in the big blind, trying to come back and rebound here. There's a plus one raise to 2,500. Pretty big open, it seems like, but I'm happy to defend it with a good hand when action folds to me, so I make the call. Going heads up, out of position, the flop comes ace-king-4 to diamonds. This is something with middle pair, I guess. I check it over to him, and he blasts away 5,000. What? <laughs> so big. Obviously, this board smashes his range. I don't have a whole lot of chips behind here. I'm sitting with the queen of diamonds for some backdoor possibilities, and uh, I don't know. I think when I play the main event here, it's all about future game and the ability to pick better spots. In this one, I am going to just pass up on. I fold my middle pair, backdoor flush draw, and I have to navigate 27 big blinds for the next hour and a half. Need some heat here, dealer. All right, I pick up king queen offsuit once again, but this time I'm on the button. Action folds the cutoff to my right, and he raises it up to 2,300. I think with this hand, I should have a mixed strategy of three betting or calling, and this time I decided to not be aggressive and make the call. The big line comes along as well, so we're going multi-way. The flop comes 10, 6, 7, rainbow. All right, well, action checks to me. I've totally bricked out, but I just can't lose every single paw, right? I'm incentivized to bet on a board that might favor me a little bit more and win the pot right now, so I test it out. I bet out 2,700 into the field. Both fold. I'm on the board. I won a freaking hand. Thank God. At least I won one hand in this main event if all things are dust. And moving on, this next hand gets spicy with pocket tens in the hijack. The Unknown player opens it up to 2100. He's the chip leader at the table so far. Plus two makes the call. Low jack on my right, three bets to 7,000. And now facing this action, what do I do with tens? The player on my right has three bet three times in the last 20 minutes. So there's a chance he actually could be doing this light. I have 30 big blinds and a dream. There are plenty of chips in the middle up for grabs and... Like the king-queen hand, I think this is a spot I'm willing to take or pass up for something better. I think it's hard to find better spots than pocket tens here. So I'm going to go for it. If I jam and get called, I'll likely be flipping, but got to be uncomfortable and willing to die in these tournaments. I rip it all in. Just an hour or two into sitting down into my seat in this main event, I'm all in for my tournament life, and it's scary. Luckily, action folds quickly back around to my right. And you know what's even better? He doesn't snap call, which is awesome news. He doesn't have a premium like Queens Plus or maybe even Ace King. But after a while, I'm kind of just hoping for a fold. Happy to just take down whatever's dead in the middle here. But he does end up calling. Shit. For a tournament life, let's see what happens. And see, I'm up against pocket nines. 80% chance to win and double up. Let's go to a runout where I flop a set, but sweat, he has a straight draw. I'm never out of the woods yet. The turn pairs the board. Let's freaking go. And even as an extra needle, he actually ends up rivering the straight, but it doesn't matter. The full house is going to win. And I find the fat double up I truly needed here. Finally, on the board, I have more than starting stack, and I have 80,000 in my stack now. Let's keep the momentum going. Just found a fat double up. I pick up jack 10 of diamonds in the small blind. There is a low jack raised to 2,100. The button makes the call. I make the call with a good hand, but now the big blind to close out the action. He's a party pooper, and three bets to 9,500. And guess what? Interesting things develop, because the low jack and button call. What? Playing super deep, I have a hand that plays really well post-flop and really easy to play as if I want to connect with a big flop or not. And okay, I mean, it's thinking about whether I want to gamble for 7,000 or not. And I guess let's just try to win a big one. I make the call. I stick some chips in there and play a 38,000 chip pot with a hand that hopefully will connect with a lot of boards. I'm playing out of position and let's see a flop, which comes ace, 10, three, all spades. I connected with the board, but didn't hit too hard. I check it over to the big line. He bets 12,000, and I guess it seems like an easy game for this player. All three of us just snap fold. He takes it down, and yeah, I guess I lose a little bit of chips, but I thought it was worth the gamble. Following that hand, I pick up a pretty one, an ace queen of hearts on the big line. There is an ungun player. He's the massive stack of the table, raises to 2,400, and action folds around to me. This is actually a pretty good spot to three bets. I have a very playable and obviously good hand, but 
out of position against someone that covers me. I want to preserve my tournament life to a certain degree, and I just make the call. We're going to go to a flop, which comes 884 to clubs. Not great, but it is a paired board. I check it over to him, and he checks back. Turn comes the three of diamonds, so I expect ace high to be good here a lot of the time. I bet out 4,300. And for 4,300, he actually makes the call. So that's not great. River now comes a double paired board in the three of clubs. But the flush rod does get there. Here, uh, I don't really know what I'm thinking. Kind of just want to block bet. Kind of want to just get a fold. I guess I'm bluffing with ace queen at this point. Not entirely sure, but I decided to bet out 5,500. He doesn't take too long before just tossing in a call with pocket sevens. A pair is going to beat ace high in this specific situation. I chipped down just a little bit, and this was one of the hands that I misplayed during the main event here. Unfortunate, but moving on to dinner break. All right, we played four hours of poker today. Not a lot happened. Uh, I just folded for the last two hours. You guys didn't see what happened because we played level eight. Nothing interesting happened in level eight. We're on dinner break right now for like an hour and 15 minutes. We get some food. This summer has really tested my patience because I've never been card dead more, and it's hard to show highlights of card death because no one wants to see that. You guys want to see some action. So uh, after dinner break, gonna go back in there. I have I have starting stack, 61,000. I have above starting stack, so that's the positive note. That's it, dinner break after that. Let's try to spin it up. I'm on a really good table with a lot of chips in, so I want to get involved. It's been about two and a half hours since I've played a hand, and here, moving on to level nine, I am back at starting stack with 40 big blinds and a dream. I pick up pocket eights in early position, and happy to raise this one. I open it up to 3,500. The hijack makes the call, who covers me. So out of position, we go to a flop of queen six three to clubs. Not a bad board for eights, but a spot where I'm not going to connect with the board too often. I start off with a check out of position, and he bets out 5,000. Seeing as it seems like this player loves betting these half pot sizings, not sure what that means, but that's his go-to sizing. I make the call and see a turn, which is a pretty safe looking four of diamonds. All right, happy to check once again. Line is probably going to be check calling if he does bet, but he ends up checking back. Seeing a free river card, it is the deuce of hearts. It's another pretty safe card, although I do lose to a five. Expecting a five to barrel again when they improve to a straight draw though. So I'm expecting to win a lot of time here and action goes check, check. I show my hand and he shows pocket tens. Damn it, losing the minimum, but it's pretty annoying when you keep running into it. And here we are, chipping down to about 35,000 and moving on to this next hand. It folds to me in the small one with queen five off suit. Let's just take the big blind down. Preflop, I decide to go all in with queen five off suit. I get snapped by the big blind and he has pocket jacks. This is how I'm going to go out, huh? Queen five off, a spew, a punt in the $10,000 main event buy-in versus pocket jacks. I need some help and the flop comes two fives. What? <laughs> The dealer bails me the hell out and river queen extra needle. I find a full house poker in tournaments is all about timing and what the hell I've chipped down all day basically and in a blink of an eye my tournament life is saved. The tournament life just flashed before my eyes. I was supposed to die and the dealer bails me the hell out and I double up to 70,000. Feels like I just got another lifeline in this tournament, in the biggest tournament of the entire year. How ridiculous is this? Let's build on this miraculous hand with the queen five. Next hand with jack nine of clubs in the low jack. I raise things up 3,500 when action folds to me. Play to my left makes the call, who I just sucked out on, and the small blind calls as well. Both chip leaders at the table. The flop comes queen jack five, all diamonds. Middle pair monotone board not really loving it don't think i can put a lot of money into the pot here so action checks all the way around seeing a free turn which is the three of hearts okay doesn't change the board at all and the small blind leads out for five thousand. betting into the field out of position i think my hand it serves as a pretty easy call although i could be convinced to folding here with another player to act behind but you know folding is boring i make the call the other player folds so heads up in position the river is the eight of clubs so another card that doesn't really change a whole lot 10 9 now becomes a straight but it's less relevant as i hold a nine in my hand he bets out pretty small six thousand all right no decision in my opinion i think just tossing a call and hoping to win he has queen ten of clubs okay well yeah I, I can't win ever at showdown i just have to get it in really bad and find a way to suck out it seems like so back in the losing trail unfortunately but after this hand the payouts get announced a whopping $80 million in the prize pool in this main event, $10 million up top, and 1,300 players will make the money. 
Let's get it. All right, we're on our last break, entering the last level of the day. Two more hours left after this like quick little break here. I haven't picked up any hands. Uh, I have like 70K after the Queen 5 disaster debacle. Not disaster, because I won. Uh, but I have like 35 bigs. That's what I'm comfortable with. Time to pick up some hands. The best hand I've looked down was the 10s hand. And then I had Ace King one time on a 7, 6, 4 flop versus the big blind. So that's that's all I got. Not, not much cooking, but hopefully not going to die in the next two hours. When I tell you I've been card dead, it's been pretty brutal because I'm not playing a lot of hands and I'm sitting here for a long time. Welcome to the folding montage of all of the beautiful hands I've gotten in this level 10. Like the last day. <laughs> Because right. I would have done it to anybody else. Yep. And then pay at my friend table. Unfortunately, I'm just losing every small pot that I enter, so I chip back all the way down to starting stack of about 60,000 before finally seeing something playable. King Jack of Hearts in plus one. The patience has finally paid off. I raise things up to 4,000 with a pretty hand to see. Action folds around to the small blind who three bets to 14,000. Once again, when I see small blind three bets, it seems really strong, but King Jack suited is a very playable hand. I've been carded as well. Let's see a flop which comes. Deuce four five rainbow. What the hell is that, dealer? Whiff City with the King Jack, but he starts off with a check surprisingly, and don't think I'm really allowed to bet much here. I don't think any ace high would ever fold with a gut shot here, so I check back with King Jack. Turn is a deuce. He bet 6,000. <sighs> I'm gonna fold because I have nothing. And just like that, a few orbits in, I'm paying the blinds and I'm down to 30,000 once again before the very next deal with Ace Jack offsuit. I'm under the gun. All right, deal me some heat. I have 15 big blinds. I raise to 4,000. Small blind and big blind make the call and let's hit. Please, dealer, I've been folding for hours here. The flop comes 8432 clubs. What the hell? Where are the cards I want to see? What's even worse is the small blind checks, but the big blind bets 10,000. Fold, 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 fold. I'm crippled. I'm crippled. Unfortunately, I've been sitting here for hours trying to be patient, and I'm folding the 5-4 offsuit, the 7-6 offsuit, and it gets announced. I am on fumes. The last hand of the day, I have about 20,000 in my stack. It's not a whole lot, but I appeal queens in the cutoff. What? Finally, a hand I can play action folds to me. I'm on a very short stack, and I obviously don't really want to scare off worse hands. So I decided to min raise to 4,000 here. Folds around to the big blind. He covers the table. Please, please give me some action. He asks me if I even want to show up to day three of the main event with my very short stack. And to be honest, I just... I'm not trying to influence action. I tell him it's up to him, whatever he wants to do. He ends up deciding on making the call to see a flop. He has literally all the chips at the table, so I don't mind him gambling with me. The flop comes 8-5 high. All right, awesome flop. I have pocket queens. Come on. He thinks about the decision for a while, and he puts me all in. He lead jams. Snap call. Couldn't have called any quicker. Finally, I've waited all freaking day, and on the final hand, final hour, I get bailed out. He has queen nine off suit, so he's basically dead besides going runner, runner nine. The turn seals the deal. Check mark for me. I freaking find a double up on the very last hand of the night. Shows that some patience has paid off. Wow. Nice way to find a double. Much needed after all of the ridiculous folds and seeing a bunch of really bad cards. And here we are, ending off the day on a high note. I'm at a stoplight for all the people I know a very dirty windshield. I'm at a stoplight for the people uh, that always get on, on my ass about vlogging while driving. Anyways, outro time. I've never seen 4-3 offsuit more in my life. I've never folded for 10 hours straight in my entire life. Comment down below just saying, great job, Ethan. You didn't punt. I didn't punt today. And I tried my best, I valued my tournament life, and I just wanna say I'm very grateful to play this WSOP, be very grateful to play this main event and have this experience and share it in the vlog, but oh my God, folding for 10 hours makes me want to just die. I was withering away, and, and then suddenly I find a double up, catching a punt myself with queens. 
Awesome, so that's it. Uh, today was brutal. I have under 20 big blinds for tomorrow, but I'm in today three, hoping that there's two parts because that means I'm gonna spin up the 20 big blinds and try to make a run at this thing. Day three, end of day three is usually when you make the money. So there's that, I'm rushing home. I gotta be back at Bally's to play day three of this thing in 11 hours. So signing off the vlog, thank you for watching. Let's pray to God that there's a day three and this video ends because that means maybe something happened tomorrow. Wish me luck. Thanks for the run good. Thanks for all the support, uh, real time and social media. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.